potato scores, or is it getting its matches? Yes, I think this is updating the. Um, it's updating these tables down here, I think. Any ideas on that one? Appreciate it. <laughs> it's not particularly uh, clear what. Yeah. And you just have loads of indexes like that. It's whereas if that said team names to match column or something like that, it would yeah. be clearer. Yeah. yeah. I guess the question is whether there's any easier way to get data into a multi-column list box. I don't. I don't. I can't think of anything that. Well, this is like the the array of. The number of, of your size, your target size, and then giving just particular. I think, I think that's what that bit. Similar bit, yeah. That bit, too. Yeah. Because I think he's got, because it's not zero. It's not zero, one, two. The order of the array coming in isn't the same order of the columns that he wants to populate, I guess, is the challenge, right? It's not clear what's too many. Uh, is that because of this? Because the content of this is 2D? <laughs> so we're looking at, we're looking at that there. So I mean, I'm guessing one of those inputs is one team name, the other one must be the other team name. Yeah. I, yeah. But then he's got four, four things coming off the matches. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, yeah, I don't know. Because it's getting an extra match. So a unit test will show you exactly what it's intended to do. Yeah. I'll just do it down here. Anyway, okay. So effectively what it does is it gets the, the next matches. Uh, so this day is a much more. Anyway, it passes on to the next bit, which is similar to the knockout stages. Um, and I think that takes the same approach as the others. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So it's doing exactly the same thing there. Um, taking in the reference of the. Yeah, there's multiples because there's four quarterfinals, right? So it's taking, it's populating each uh, multicon list box with the result, um, and then it will move on to. Yeah, depending on whether it's the, the final or not, we'll do something different. So we'll get back to. The, Get knockout stage winners until it gets the final and it simulates the final. So I guess he's kind of taking the same approach for quarterfinals and semi finals, so he's using the same functionality to execute those two things. Um, so he's effectively got three simulation functions the groups, knockout stages, and then the final. So they could look at the final, he's done a third and fourth place as well. Yeah, slightly different approach, but I think this really highlights that there's so many ways that you could solve the same problem, right? I mean, quite a contrast to, to Lear's, and uh, Lear's took it a little bit further, but I think it's, it just highlights that point, really, that there's tons of ways of doing it. Next time, everyone should be submitting their, um, <laughs> their things, because it would be great to go through a few more. Um, so, I guess, um, I'll, if there's any other questions on this one, anything else you want me to show you or go through on this one? What, what's the VI doing outside of the, the case statement there with the no. set? Yeah. Uh, it's like a. I think it's like, yeah, it's like an initialized, so you can use that in multiple places to get the class data. Uh, so I think you'll find that's probably. Yeah, used in lots of places. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, just getting the class so that you can then access the data wherever you want around the system. So it's a bit like you can do queues. So you can do have a FTV for your obtain queue and yeah. DQ and queue stuff. Yeah. 
Anything else? Is that how you normally deal with class data? Or would you not put it in a no sort of loop and keep it as local data through that? Yeah, that, I don't think that's that. I don't think that's classing. I, I think what they've got there is like a global variable that's holding everything at the top level. So they're using that as a global variable between them. Um, so the the fact that a, a class is almost incidental there would be easily be a cluster too. Um, it's mainly about keeping that global data synced between this event handling loop and the processing loop. Um, Yeah, that's what we do. Chris thought he's not here to defend himself. Probably suggests that one might be doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you mean, that BI or? The, the class. The class, yeah. So, so I, I from think a... you can see maybe there's, you just need to share data to start with, and because you need some initialization data between the two, you'd kind of expect them to be pretty independent after that data wise. You just need to ping back to this front panel some status information. Uh, it's it's not that it's bad, but any time you're sharing data between loops like that, there's a chance of things going awry. <laughs> so if you can find a, a variation on the design that eliminates that, it's, it's really useful. Because one of the alternatives is to do that by wire, right? So you wouldn't have the... But then it depends on how else it's interacting with the system, I guess. Yeah, so it depends on what's in it. It looks like it's all references anyway in this case. It's probably just coming as part of the template. Because uh, it's all references, you don't need to reshare it anyway because the references don't change. Mm. Um, what I try, I'm kind of working on this thing, I try and do more. Actually, this is what my NIO presentation is for. NIO Day, sorry if we're going to mute. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, I would only prefer, if possible, if there is data that's likely to change, to send it as an event rather than using that globe mechanism. Then that way each of them have their own copy at the relevant times. So if the data changes down here, and it's needed up here, you fire send it via a, that, yeah. a, a custom user event, or a, you know, user event, to update the UI. Or generally, like, if you're not even updating the UI, if you're just passing data between modules? Yeah, I mean, essentially that's acting as a global variable. Yeah. So if that data is never changing, that's pretty safe. Any time that's changing, it, there's a chance of race conditions slipping in. So if there's a way to pass that by a message, so they both have their own copy and can manage it however they want to manage it, it reduces the risk of that, basically. Um, so passing it through some kind of messaging thing tends to be a, a safer option. Um, but in this case, it looks like it's mostly referenced anyway, so yeah. probably in this particular application, it probably never changes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. awesome. this is performance. Penalty as well, potentially. It's probably okay in this, but if you had very fast code as well, that structure has a penalty because there's a like synchronization that's got to go on between the loops to access it. Yeah. I think the, the testing thing's really interesting here. And, um, speaking before, John, I <laughs> hopefully I've understood this right. So that's more of what I call asserts rather than yeah. testing. They're using it test framework to do it. Yeah. Um, but that's a really interesting thing for debugging. So you would hit debug true on that and that's going to immediately flag if, if if like yeah you had an empty array for quarter final like, well that should never happen. Yeah. Um, so that, that's quite an interesting thing he's done there. If you look yeah where you have the the um it's put down here, right? So it's about, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, is this array the size we expect it to be? Yeah. And you're going to know immediately if you screw something up with your dimensions. <laughs> and that, and where would you access that data it runs when you're running the application? Does it, I can't, is it launched in a separate window or something? <coughs> I was trying to remember that earlier as I was looking at it. I think with Karaya it will pop a window as soon as one fails. Yeah. But I'm not certain. If it's, if it's Karaya, that is Karaya, isn't it? Yeah. Karaya yeah. definitely does do that, actually. Yeah, it does. It, it launches a, a, a front panel that goes through each test yeah. um, effectively. So for everyone that's not familiar with Karaya or unit testing, so what John is doing here is effectively running a test, effectively, and it enables him to have debug information whilst he's running the application. So in this one, he's just sending that data to that particular test. So within a separate window, that data will come up in a view that you can then use to sort of debug as to whether it's, that function is performed as he expected. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Well, thank you, Jono, for uh, putting your, um, your your solution forward and giving the way. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm just back, so um, just quickly summarise what I'm going to try and cover and why, why I'm doing it really. Um, I want to try and um, understand or um, perhaps gather some information, some data about how people complete projects. Because everybody does it, right? Even if you're a student in a lab or uh, someone in a corporation, um, whatever scale, you complete projects and there's different ways you can do it. Uh, but it's relatively, especially with software projects anyway, there's, there's, there's a relatively common um, processes that you go through to achieve the end goal. So, I mean, we, I've had problems completing projects in the past, I think everybody has. Um, and it's just trying to work out whether there's some sort of common topics that we can sort of cover to sort of pull in everybody's experience and maybe somehow try and share that. Um, so this is really kind of initial thoughts on, on this and I don't even know if there's any value in it to be honest, so just sort of trying to chuck it out there and see whether people sort of think it's something that would be, would be useful. I mean, what, is that something that somebody, people would look at if, if they were sort of doing a project? Maybe we'll cover that in a bit, but I guess what I'd really like is a bit of feedback as to whether, I'm, whether I should bother carrying on with this really or whether it's, yeah, it's sort of a dead duck. Cause for me it's really interesting because um, we have learned quite a lot through delivering projects, and we're, we're getting better at it, but we've still got areas where we can improve, for sure. And as new people come on board, it's about how do those, those people then um, sort of join the team effectively. Um, so before I jump into that, I just wanted to mention DDevCon, because it's a really good opportunity to sort of share this. So James and myself, and you may have seen Sam as well, who's come along to this, so on the, on the team that organised DDevCon. And um, we've now had two conferences. I think there's a, I can see a few faces here that have been to one or the other. Um, and um, basically, we, we're setting out to create a series of events um, that enable us to um, share knowledge and, and sort of pragmatic solutions that people have come to to, to solve problems that everybody's facing. Um, and um, like I say, we've just had our second one in Birmingham, and we're in the, in the process of planning for the next one. And um, the way that I'd probably summarise it in a few words is that it's really a, a user group on, on steroids, really. It's, it's kind of, we get leading people from in the community and people who haven't presented as well, like people who've got something to talk about it and it's going to be interesting, it's going to give people some value, then we really welcome that. Um, but it really gives us uh, a platform to share that with everybody. So it's a bit like a user group, but it's over a couple of days um, and, it, and it's awesome, so you should definitely sign up to... The, uh, the, the mailing list because uh, we'll be sending out some information shortly about uh, the next one. So that's the, the website there and um, uh, make sure you get on that and sign up for the newsletter. Um, and we're also not too far away from uh, releasing the videos for the one that's just gone. We're about a couple of weeks away from that. Um, so we've got a YouTube channel, anybody can access that. So subscribe onto that as well and you'll get a notification when those videos go up. So, yeah, I've sort of covered some of this. Um, I think this is a really important point because um, it, it doesn't always go right. I think everybody can probably recall a time when they've done a project and it's gone a bit tits up um, and for, for one or other reason. Um, and it can be at any stage of that as well, I think, that, that, that can cause those problems. Um, and, yeah, what, what I was saying really is was how, how can we kind of share those lessons that we've learned um, maybe within our own teams, but also within the community as well, and see, see whether there's any uh, scope for doing that. So what I sort of tried to do, so this could be a really short presentation if nobody participates, right? This could be a five minute. So um, I'm really hoping that somebody's going to talk to me. Um, what I've done is really highlighted all of the kind of elements that come with delivering projects. Um, so not necessarily in order, but probably in order. Um, so we've got the design aspect, which we've talked a little bit about today. You've got the element of risk, which is, comes along with every project. Um, and we've got the development stage, uh, how you manage the project, um, what you do about documentation, 
then the commissioning element of it, which is normally the fun bit. Um, and then what happens after the project's completed? How do you support that project? Um, so just on those few things there, is there anything anybody would add to that list or would expand out of there in any comments? Or does that pretty much cover how people see their projects? Would you include the, the customer, the, the stakeholders in the management part? Or Definitely. Or every bit? Or? I think, yeah, I think <laughs> management is one of those things that covers the oh, full right. spectrum of the project all the way through from the start to finish. Pick up on all those bits throughout, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's.